All right. What's 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 the current state of this whole situation, and what can be done about it? Um, George, for the past few years, yeah. we've discussed issues of youth and the use of digital yeah. apps. Yeah. And this comes to me as quite a surprise, mm. but it's not isolated. Yes. Uh, so therefore, the general I can say is that Ghanaians shouldn't panic. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so it's it's shocking, it's surprising, but it's not extraordinary. Why, why is it not extraordinary? Um, George, this boils down to economics. Just as my senior colleague will join us shortly. Okay. Say, yeah. Um, the conditions of service of men and women in uniform oh. are very bad. <coughs> Look at their accommodation. Remuneration levels are quite too low. Mm. Uh, so at the end of the day, why would a person be ready to say, I do training and retraining? For okay, and okay, uniform. in uniform. One such anecdote I, I heard was yeah. that someone got injured in line of duty and he needed insurance. There was mm. no health insurance. Uh, so therefore, we need to look at this holistically. But I would hearken back to what I said initially, George. That Ghanaians shouldn't panic, and this is not extraordinary. And we'll be able to Just quickly on this, how, how does that, how can, how does this also feed into the aspect of the illegal arms that we we have around? And Just briefly has, on this, Ghana has become a drug net, drug, a, a drug net okay. or a magnet of oh, okay. weapons within the subject. <coughs> The porosity of our borders. So we are even tired of talking about the porosity yeah, of our borders. Yeah. So therefore, moving forward, I believe that we need to tighten the loops around our entry points, whether they are terrestrial, maritime, or aerial, uh, so that we push back against such proliferation of arms. And of course, local manufacture too can be regularized, mm. and so that we track the movement okay, right. of these weapons. Right. But well, thank you very much. Um, sure. uh, you joined Hyrex in the uh, to continue with this whole discussion. Okay. Let me just quickly. Also also pick um, Madam Cecilia's thoughts on this particular subject on the um, illegal arms trade and what we can we can do about it. Uh, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. You're looking good. Thank you. Okay. Um, with, with this whole issue of illegal um, arms trade, um, how worried should we be as, as, as a nation, especially ordinary Ghanaians, those who have been watching us this morning? Um, let me say good morning to our chairman. Just briefly on that, you joined Hyrens yeah, in there. Yeah, um, there are laws in this country, yes. and the laws must be seen to work. It seems as if at the moment, it's like uh, the law of the jungle, survival of the fittest. Everybody is doing his or her own thing, mm. even starting from our parliament. You've heard recently about people getting double you know, salaries yeah, yeah. and that. And if law enforcing officers okay. are doing their own thing, it permeates into the whole society. Mm. It seems as if there's no law. I believe there are laws. Got to make the laws work mm. so that we all feel safe and secure in this country. Okay, I'll, I'll get to uh, Zabafo's thoughts also. So you join Harriet in the studio, and Harriet will continue with this whole discussion. Zabafo is one man who was really, I'm Star Amo actually, someone who has really been in this whole. Um, should I say industry for a very long time now? He he he's seen it all when it comes to um, illegal arms that we have in the system. Has anything changed with the um, number of arms that are out there illegally? Not much has changed mm. because it's, it's recirculating. That's the unfortunate part of the the reality. Mm. Well, when you say recirculate, exactly what you mean? It's moving from one place to the other. Okay. If there's a conflict in the north, a lot of arms will move up there. There's a conflict in the south, and the same arms will move down south. From wh where, where do they come from? Well, they are coming from legal and illegal stocks. Legal and illegal stocks. So let's focus briefly on the legal, then now uh, we can just... Well, the legal up. stockpile problem is what we just witnessed a uh, few days ago. Okay. Official arms yes. are being rented out. In fact, if that CID man had not found this, yes. he would have entered the proliferation yes. easily. 
Yes. So that means. Okay, and the illegal experts are the ones that are getting in the country wrongly? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So we just leave it here. You join Harriet in the studio to continue this uh, discussion. So I want to thank you very much. Thank you very All right. Much. Okay. So if Harriet is uh, ready, we'll move over. And the major discussion is going to be on illegal arms trade and what we can do about it to curb this whole situation. Uh, because if we have over a million uh, illegal arms out there that are wrongfully in the arms of people who have not even registered these guns, you can imagine what's going to happen to us in case the unfortunate should happen. Stay with us. This is the Breakfast Show. But then we had the first take of our guest over there, and uh, now we aim for the big discussion. We're talking about illegal arms trade in Ghana, and um, yes, people have different reasons why they acquire guns, and um, it could be that you want to protect yourself, your family, and your property. You could also just be that you are a fan of hunting, and you want some gun to go out hunting. Or just for prestige, I own a gun and I love guns. So some people do acquire guns for different and several reasons. But then we're talking about the illegal trade of guns in our society. And it is even sad to note that, yes, during the past elections, we knew that some guns also got into the country illegally through our borders. The police are renting out their guns. AK-47, which they are supposed to use, some of them do, um, for our protection. What do we do to rectify the situation in which we find ourselves right now? I have seated next to me Mr. Balfour Dochi, who, Amwa, who is the Chair International Action Network on Small Arms and also a member of the Small Arms Commission. And next to him, we have Madam Cecilia Otu, in this situation, we'll refer to her as a concerned citizen. Yes, because she's represented all of us here in the studio. But she's a retired nurse, actually. And um, also far off, I have Mr. Ibad Ibrahim, who is a security expert. Good to have you in the studio, all of you. Thank you. And um, yes, um, we need to find out, first of all, do we need or how do we acquire guns to start with in this country? Um, there are two different levels. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, there is the military industrial complex. So when the Republic of Ghana needs arms for its defense, we know the countries to buy those weapons from. And they can be anything between munitions and missiles. Uh, so you do that in the international market. And uh, there are arms expos uh, or exhibitions that happen around the world. So you'd want to get state of the art, you know, military material okay. to keep yourself as a country safe mm -hmm. or your citizens safe. Then on the micro level, Harriet may feel she's in a sprawling mm -hmm. developing mm -hmm. area and she needs another layer, an extra layer of security. Mm -hmm. So you would want to have a revolver of, okay. or a pistol or something of that sort to keep, or a nine, nine millimeter gun to okay. keep yourself safe. But the problem we are having currently is that people have laid uh, their hands on unlicensed guns. Yeah. Of course, because of the porosity of our borders. If you're an individual, so of course, we can discuss the macro level because we are not a country that is plagued with terrorist activities. Then we would say people are bringing in chemical weapons mm -hmm. or biological mm -hmm. weapons or missiles or all of So we look at this on a, an individual level. How do these young people uh, lay hands on these arms? Uh, so fundamentally, it's about reg regulation, it's about licensing, it's about the porosity of our borders and how these lethal weapons find themselves into this country. All right. So as an individual in the country um, and listening to Ibad right now, you represent all of the citizens of Ghana today. Are you comfortable with the kind of arrangement you have towards cancer acquisition? Thank you very much, and let me, permit me to say good morning to our cherished viewers. I don't think there is a need for individuals like me or you to arm yourself, to need ammunition. Okay. Because we have a situation, we have a government, mm -hmm. we have the army, we have the police, we have regulations, and if those institutions are working, we should feel secure enough in our homes, in our workplaces, that we don't need individual 
We don't need to arm ourselves. Look at what is happening in America. Mm -hmm. The mayhem. People are, you know, just killing. They, they, use, they, they do it as some sort of a game. Mm -hmm. And innocent lives are being lost because of the proliferation of arms. Their constitution permits them to do that. Mm -hmm. But we should look at the level. Why do we need to arm ourselves? Unfortunately, recently in Ghana, some, and I'm not making any apologies, some irresponsible parents left two children in the homes. And one of them, six year old, got hold of a gun and because they are playing, shot, you know, the, the, the sibling dead. We don't need arms. If the systems like the police are working and mm -hmm. I don't even want to go there. When I heard that they are even, we read mm -hmm. that they are, they are loaning or lending their guns to robbers. I was so devastated. I said, what sort of level have we reached mm -hmm. that these officers, I hold them in high regards. The police, they are brave men and women mm -hmm. whom we have, you know, recruited, trained, and some of them are armed to protect us. So what level have we reached that some of them can bring the level of the police in that low level, mm -hmm. that they are even prepared to you know, loan their guns to arm robberies? They are there to protect us. Yeah. And we arm them, we pro produce arms mm -hmm. for them to protect us. So if we reach the level that these people brave jobs they do. Mm -hmm. If you are in trouble, call the police. And I'm a nurse, and I know what happens in hospitals. Yeah. If you have an accident, call the police. Yeah. So what do we regard them as? So your view is that as citizens, we wouldn't require to use guns or own guns by ourselves because we have institutions that are mandated by our constitution and by our laws to protect us. Exactly so. Okay, I'll come to Ms. Tamwa. Ms. Tamwa, unfortunately, within her submission, we still heard her say that even the police are concerned to us now, hearing of the fact that they are also, some of them are loaning or renting out their guns to unscrupulous people, to armed robbers, to go and do the wrong things. This might be the reason why a civilian, therefore, might want to get, I mean, own a gun for his or her personal security. How then will such a person be able to acquire guns illegally, I mean, legally in our country? Legally, the law allows any citizen who wishes to bear arms to apply to the Minister of the Interior and acquire a gun for whatever reasons. If the reasons Where are, do you get a gun? Because for the uh, words, our Two things. There yes. are people licensed to sell, import and sell civilian weapons in this country. Okay. And they are licensed by the Minister of the Interior. The law says if you are of age and of sound mind, you will go to the police, they <laughs> investigate your background. If mm -hmm. they find you to be suitable, your application, a report will be sent to the minister. And if I want to bring in a pistol, the, the minister will approve and give me permission to bring my weapon. Mm -hmm. So it's not that the law says you cannot bear arms yeah. in this country. Mm -hmm. So the law permits us to bear arms, but you also talked about the process regarding the, or the owning or acquisition of such a property, talking about guns. And are these being followed is the question for us now to answer. Yes, you should go through, the, um, through some checks to ascertain as to whether you are eligible for such acquisition. But are we following through with that? Because we've heard from a report that there are about 1.1 million uh, unlicensed guns out there. And um, in total, about 2.2 million that of guns owned by civilians out there. Let's hear from you. And perhaps the senior colleague on the panel will do a follow-up. Yes. Um, but as a young person, I know the youth demographic is quite active mm -hmm. in terms of the possession and use of uh, such lethal toys, so to speak. 
it can't be a toy. It's it's, it's an ammunition arms. Yes, so I I I I think we need to tighten the noose mm -hmm. around the regulatory mechanisms we put in place as a country uh, to keep the good people of Ghana safe. And the challenge also is that, you know, a gun is just like a car. Um, it has got a unique identity. Mm -hmm. That is why when you shoot a gun, those in forensics can do an analysis of the bullet mm -hmm. uh, to tell from which, you know, gun the bullet was shot. Okay. Uh, so apart from those that are locally manufactured, and uh, there are algorithms Mm -hmm. uh, that are used to track the identity of any gun and uh, that is so important into the country by an international manufacturer. But the challenge is that there are chiefs in Ghana that would have an easy pass in terms of acquiring weapons. There are politicians that would have an easy pass. Mm -hmm. Privileged people would have an easy pass. Okay. But third party users are the main challenge. An armed robber cannot walk into a police station and say, just as a senior colleague has indicated, I want to legally acquire an AK-47. He won't do that. You will be investigated. So therefore, those who legally acquire the weapons, quite unfortunately, are in cahoots mm -hmm. with people who perpetrate these heinous acts. Yeah. So therefore, if you ask, Yes, of course, there are deficiencies within the regulatory mechanisms we've put in place as a country. Mm -hmm. That is why there are spillover incidents that lead to these weapons finding their way into the icy hands of these young people. Okay. I'll come to you again with that. Are we following or adhering to the legal regulations in licensing? of gun users in our country and uh, what kinds of guns are civilians supposed to own legally in our country just going we saw some display on the screen if my the, the, can bring that back. the system exists mm -hmm. for anybody who has a weapon to go and register any form of weapon at all well, we have military categories which are not meant for civilians. That's what I want to say. And we have yeah. weapons which civilians are allowed to mm -hmm. carry. If I want a pistol, yeah. I am allowed to carry a pistol, a okay. shotgun. A pump-action gun, I'm allowed to carry. But there are certain sophisticated weapons like AK-47, like J-3s, which are military weapons. They are weapons mm -hmm. of war. They are not for civilians. Madam referred to the situation in the United States. The problem yeah. in the United States is because civilians are carrying military weapons. It can fire I don't know how many rounds in a second, mm -hmm. and therefore one person with such a weapon can finish all of us in this room. We have it too little in, seconds. in this room, yeah. Exactly. So those are the weapons that are not allowed for civilian use. So in Ghana, the law clearly um, stipulates category A and B kind of weapons for civilians and people are licensed to bring these weapons in which are the the, the things I are said. Are we following the rules? Strictly? Yes, we have we have we are following the rules. Those who are law abiding are following the rules. Those who are not law abiding are not following the rules. But, but as, the system as a commission as a commission um, small I mean uh, on small arms actually just finding out from you it's not okay for us to hear that your commission exists and then we are okay to see that um, those who want to follow the rules are following the rules. They should follow the rules. They should follow the rules, madam, but we're not living in a perfect world. Mm -hmm. We are living in a world where people have all sorts of characters and characteristics. Mm -hmm. There are people who want to rob. A robber, like he says, will never show his face and say, I want a permit to use my weapon. Mm -hmm. What business do you do? You say, I'm an armed robber, and the police will let you go. They won't. Yeah. So you won't go and even make an attempt to say, I'm going to mm -hmm. register my weapon. These are the kind of challenges we have in the system. But I'm saying the system exists. Mm -hmm. If you want to register your weapon and legally own it, the system exists. You go okay. to the police headquarters, the bureau regi uh, uh, arms registry bureaus are there in all the regions. Anybody can go and do that. Okay. Then it brings the question again as to how we will be able to take out the legal or unlicensed guns in our country. Because um, as we rightly said, anybody who has not done the right thing is probably not 
the right person to register and so has not gotten the courage to do so. So how do we take out the unlicensed guns in our country so we keep safe in our country? Um, I think money will come in shortly. Yeah. Um, yes. But over time, <laughs> uh, the police have tried to incentivize mm -hmm. some of these weapons retrieving um, uh, methods. We have the DDR approach, mm -hmm. which normally is used in war torn countries, disarmament, demobilization, and rehabilitation. But in our case, apart from isolated restive areas like Boko, Bimbila, Alabanyo, and Nkunya, mm -hmm. most of Ghana is by large a, a peaceful place. Uh, so, therefore, the police came up with the idea of gun for cash. So, if on the black market, uh, a gun goes for 1,500 Ghana cities. The police can as well say, uh, bring back your gun and take twice that amount, 3,000. But the little challenge they faced was that people decided to do gun running with this. Mm -hmm. If I could get 3K for returning a gun that costs half that, yes. then I could as well go back and acquire two of those. Yes. So I would come for 6K. Mm -hmm. and be able to buy more. Yeah. Uh, so some of these mechanisms have not been impeccable, just as the senior colleague has indicated. Mm -hmm. But I believe that the Small Arms Commission should be given the needed tools uh, to be able to, in concert with the Ghana Police Service, National Security and the BNI, retrieve these lethal weapons and make sure we get rid of, rid of them entirely. And Ghana is gravitating towards and total, you know, uh, lawlessness in terms of regulation. Uh, recently, some people brought in grenades. Yeah. Uh, so we are graduating from mm -hmm. pistols and G3s and AK-47 rifles. We've reached the level of what? Uh, importing or smuggling into the country. Uh, grenades, who knows where we go from here? But that is not to cause fear and panic. I believe the situation is salvageable. The state institutions that are mandated uh, to deproliferate the system of these weapons uh, should be um, given the needed equipment and the needed funding to be able to carry out their duties. Uh, let me add a little bit to the how. How do we get these weapons? Mm -hmm. We don't want in our system. You need complex, multiple strategies. One, you can declare amnesty from time to time and say that if you haven't had the opportunity to register your weapon, this is a time you can go to the police and register your weapon. Mm -hmm. Nobody will do anything to you. There are people holding weapons, they haven't renewed their licenses. Yes. And they are afraid they, they will be penalized and all their guns will be seized. If there's an amnesty which is granted by government to say within this period, if you have any weapon, please go and regularize. Fine. People, some people will do it, some will not do it. The other strategy we need to re realize we can also encourage is to allow the police to organize soups. You condone an area and you search every house in that area. And if there are weapons in those areas, the police might be lucky. And sometimes they can do it even with the military, you know, um, because there are people, no matter what you do, they will not voluntarily go and surrender their weapons. So sometimes a little bit of force is important. Um, regular, regular, regular mm -hmm. advertising and encouraging messages to people to be responsible citizens with guns will be important. We call it public education and sensitization. If the message is right, sometimes like you hear an arm robber saying, I went to a crusade and I became born again. Mm -hmm. What message did the pastor preach for somebody to say that I was an armed robber and start crying and say, save me? Messages are very important. So public education and sensitization is also very important. So we believe if all these strategies are being encouraged, and now come to the borders. Yes, we will never have enough policemen to man our porous borders. Mm -hmm. Now we have scientific methods. If we have resources, let's put the, them into uh, good use by using technology that will help. Maybe fly some uh, drones ar ar across our borders. Maybe have scanners, because you see somebody is bringing a whole truckload of um, charcoal. Sometimes we hear beneath those huge uh, pile of charcoal bags are weapons. So sometimes if we have mechanized, technological way of 
passing these vehicles through scanners. Maybe we'll help our immigration officers to be able to identify some. These are some of the methods if we really push, mm -hmm. we can rid our country of illeg illicit weapons. What are we talking about? These are not toys. Weapons. What is the benefit of it? What are their usages? They are not toys, just as I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. that the two kids thought it, you know, something to play yeah. with. And look at the, the, the devastation that it can cause. Why does ordinary people like you and me need guns? What is it for? To protect ourselves from whom? And if we have agencies whom we feel confident and trust that they're going to provide that protection to, for us, mm -hmm. we wouldn't need it. So because, and we should be very careful that we don't do as other people are doing. Just because anything that somebody else does, we feel we've got to do the same. Otherwise, we, we don't feel that we belong. We don't need guns. Ordinary people don't need guns. Because guns are for specific reasons. They are not toys. They are not something to be displayed. You've got one, so I've got to own one. You know, farmers, Hunters, you know, those years pass. We know that, you know, hunters, you know, have to provide mm -hmm. guns to be able to, you know, achieve their goals. Mm -hmm. But ordinary people, what do we need guns for? They are not safe. And if we equip and train the personnel mm -hmm. who are supposed to protect us, and they are not, <laughs> they are not those three, mm -hmm. whom recently are disgracing our police officers, the profession which yes. we all respect. If we don't, we should. You know, if we do that, we don't, other people don't need guns. Are we, what are we going to hunt? And there are no toys to be, you know, to be played about because these are lethal weapons. They can destroy, they can kill. So. We don't need to own guns. Okay. So talking about we don't need to own guns, um, I must say, Christian from Japan is asking, please, I want to ask if uh, mobile money vendors who are attacked by armed robbers can register, can buy and register guns to protect their business. So this is somebody asking as to how he can protect yeah. their business. Yeah, I think I'm on yeah. the same wavelength with mommy mm -hmm. that the more public confidence in the Ghana police service plummets, yeah. the more the appetite of people to want to protect themselves and their families. Mm -hmm. um, but the little advice we can give is that, yes, the U.S. Um, has provided a conducive enabling environment for people to own and use guns, even for leisure. So when you go to Nevada, and there are places where you go on shooting ranges. So you can wake up one morning, one morning just as people go to recreational centers. Mm -hmm. The whole family can go out and say, we are going to a shooting range. Yeah. So they just fire weapons in a, you know, in a controlled area mm -hmm. uh, as a form of leisure. But Ghana, you've even not had three square meals. Yeah. How much more? going to shoot for fun. Yes. Uh, so therefore, yes, it fits into the narrative that mommy is uh, advocating that mm -hmm. if the Ghana Police Service would come uh, in real time, when you call 191 mm -hmm. or any of their numbers, 13555, they would come. And as I said, I do training and retraining for security personnel. But um, this past week, during a lecture at the university, while I was giving instructions uh, to practitioners, they admitted sometimes when citizens are in distress and they call them, they intentionally blow the siren, knowing so well that they are ill-equipped and they can't match up to uh, mm -hmm. the armed robbers. So during that time you are blowing the siren, whatever would have happened to an ordinary Ghanaian would have happened. Yeah. Uh, so therefore there is a certain penchant uh, for people to want to own guns. Yeah. So before the police would get there, they would be able to protect mm -hmm. themselves and their families. So that, you know, need is there. 
but I believe that if we're able to resource the Ghana Police Service to respond to distress calls in real time, and a litany of murder cases as a result of gunshots mm -hmm. that have not been resolved. Yeah. A whole certain MP was killed, yes. Fennec Autry mm -hmm. was killed, and the list is endless. Yeah. Uh, so therefore, I believe we need to imbue confidence in the citizens of this country. Then they will not have the appetite to mm -hmm. want to own guns. And finally, I, I have a huge challenge. Yeah. Um, Intel will tell you that when these guns, many of them come through Boko because of the fact that since the Gaddafi regime in Libya was toppled, his arsenal was vandalized. Okay. So many of those weapons have trickled down to the Sahel and the rest of West Africa. But the way these weapons are able to crisscross this country is shocking. Weapons come in through uh, Paga. Mm -hmm. They're able to go to Kumasi, come to Accra, mm -hmm. go to the Volta region, go to other places. And so therefore, intercity transport companies. Yeah. Do you know there are buses in Ghana that are not stopped on the highways for checkups to be done? Mm -hmm. They are not stopped. Yeah. So therefore, I believe that the undercarriage of VIP buses should be scanned. And people who go on board these buses should be checked because with a backpack, you can mm -hmm. transport an AK between Accra and Kumasi unfettered and unbridled because the police checkpoints don't stop these buses yeah. on the highways. Yeah. So therefore, these are some of the things I believe if we're able to address, then the proliferation of arms, that is becoming quite a huge security problem will be dealt with. Okay. In All right. Let me bring in some of our viewers. Sayed from... Atrensua says, honestly, having a law that demands the registration of arms is not enough. I think the law only makes provision for registering the weapon. How sure are we that the ones registering their guns can actually use them well? This is another aspect we should look at. The authorities should have the facilities where people can be screened and declared competent enough to wield the guns. Else, we could be faced with situation where a person possesses a gun and has legally registered it, but may be a danger to themselves and those around them because they can't or cannot be trusted to use them properly. So this is another consideration and renewal of guns too. Some time ago, when I had a conversation with the Secretary of the Arms, General Secretary of the Arms the Commission. Secretary. Okay. He actually mentioned that during the renewal, you don't go through the process of um, um, checking again whether you are capable or you are fit to own a gun. You, are, you just pay the fee mm -hmm. and then your guns uh, get renewed for you. Is, are these things that we need to revise? Because at any point in time, for instance, the mental stability of anybody can change at any moment. So today I might be fit to own that gun, tomorrow I might not be. Are we looking at, I mean, reviewing some of these things? Yes, I, I think the point is, is good. it's a good one. Background checks should be continuous. I don't yes. think background checks should be once, mm -hmm. uh, definitely, because we are talking about weapons here. Yeah. Uh, again, I don't speak for the commission, but the little I know is that efforts are being made to encourage um, weapon training centers mm -hmm. in the country so that if I acquire a weapon I can go there and have myself trained how to use the weapon correctly because mm -hmm. a lot of people have killed themselves because they didn't know how to yeah. fire these weapons properly yes and so even storing them right <clears throat> we're talking about the psychological aspect yes. of somebody who wants to own a gun mm -hmm. who's going to do that have we got the setup for that even just last night I was listening to you know, VOA mm -hmm. and a police officer have been raping and murdering people for 40 years. For 40 years. Who's going to mm -hmm. check these people psychologically that they are fit? Look at the recent three police officers. Yeah. What is their psyche that an honorable, you know, profession so like that, yeah. can, they can bring themselves to loan their guns to to arm robbers, the people that they are there for, you know, to be apprehended by police officers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, who's going to check their psyche? I'm talking as a psychiatric nurse. Yes. You know, who's going to check these people? And okay, as my, my, my so colleague said. So we need to said, probably uh, reconstitute 
it's a it's a the huge problem, problem yeah. which is facing us and it's got to start somewhere a journey of a thousand miles you know starts with one step but we've got to be serious you know my colleague said earlier that you know we can wish to own gun or we can wish to do things but mm -hmm. the law does not permit us to do just as we wish or as we please because it may not be good for the larger society. What I would want to do personally as an individual mm -hmm. may not be conducive, may not be beneficial to the larger community. So we have to be serious about this gun situation. It's not okay. a toy. It's a weapon. It's a killer. It can kill. And look at the indiscriminate use which is going on elsewhere. Yeah. People are just being killed. Innocent people. Just because somebody, you know, takes the right in shooting or owning a gun. We have right. to be very serious. So we need to control the system um, and sanitize it as well. Senor Inakachi says that arms registration should be decentralized to allow people to register. And uh, I'll do quite a number of them that we can come with our comments. Um... Ghana Highway should, okay, so we'll attend to that later, quickly. It says, good morning. I, um, no, I think I've read the one already. Um, okay. Ghana must control the weapons of the police by registering each weapon, but... Why is sports not part of the <laughs> okay of the BFS? Okay, so my producers, I hear you. You want a sports update on the show? Uh, we'll take that on board. Daniel from Malabuba, he says that um, the weapons of the police should also be registered. I think they're registered. And there, they, there is a program yeah. to mark all weapons mm -hmm. in the military and in the police hands and in all the immigration hands. Mm -hmm. Efforts have been made to mark all weapons. We haven't finished, mm -hmm. but the, pro the process is ongoing. But we can, we can link each gun to an individual or a yes. service Yes, the person. incident that occurred over the mm -hmm. weekend, I think it's a, it's a tip for the police to improve their system of control of okay. their stockpile because in those days in the early days when we had we were not um, a big country every police officer who was assigned a weapon there was spot checks there were time you would go and sign for the mm -hmm. weapon there was a time you return the weapon and yes. you sign so probably this is a sign that our control system is weak or is getting weak and maybe the police needs to uh, improve that okay our government policies are responsible for these please um, please do not call my line. For these pleas act in the country, the pleas is used will not be properly dealt with because it's the police themselves who will do their investigations as the so call it pips in this country. I have a bitter experience with a police officer uh, who was once in charge of a Wutu. Okay. Poor policing in Ghana now. Ple okay. So. He's talking about police uh, in general, their professionalism and control. I mean, talking about what can be done. But in general, in rounding up, talking about illegal armed trade in Ghana, yes, we have identified the problems, where the loopholes are. What is the way forward? Um, I would want to um, reassure Ghanaians that, yes, of course, there are other priorities we need to channel our energies on. Uh, these cases are extraordinary no they are not isolated mm -hmm. but they are not extraordinary they are isolate they are not isolated but they are extraordinary okay uh, so therefore I would want to say that there is no need for fear and panic and the Ghana police service will continue to work around the clock to flash out um, unscrupulous members of the service that are part of um, armed robbery syndicates and they are complicit in some of these crimes mm -hmm. so ours is uh, if you see something don't keep mum say something and the tip of you can give as a neighbor the tip of you can give as an associate I would be helpful for the Ghana police service to retrieve some of these little weapons mm -hmm. and again owning it is not enough it doesn't suffice regular checks should be made to look at how you even handle the gun yeah. i think there's consensus around this table that and uh, the use of a gun is rooted in psychology yeah. people even have mood swings 
mm -hmm. um, people may be heartbroken as a result of breakups in relationships. Yeah. And in recent times, we've seen an uptick in the cases of, you know, suicide. So therefore, apart from being trigger happy, one's proximity to a gun increases the propensity for you to even take away your life when you are faced with the challenges of life. So therefore, the efficiency within the security agencies would take away the need for people mm -hmm. to want to own guns. That would be the ideal situation. But okay. anything other than that, I think we should strengthen uh, the regulatory mechanisms we have to deproliferate the system of these weapons. Okay. Speaking as a psychologist, mm -hmm. yes, Madam Zisla, too. way forward. The way forward is to properly retrain, encourage, support our police officers, because they do a heroic job. Look at the officer who, through his good citizen attitude, managed to have the three armed robbers yeah, apprehended. apprehended. So he should, he should, the country has to recognize yeah. that we have some good citizens amongst us. It's not all, you know, gloomy. Mm -hmm. You know, we have good citizens who are prepared not to be observers, but to participate in a positive way. Mm -hmm. Retrain the officers, equip them, encourage them. And I, you know, I, I appreciate the action of the IGP mm -hmm. to suspend these people. Those rotten apples, if I can use that expression, mm -hmm. should be thrown out of the system so that the citizenry will have confidence in the people whom we have trained, employed to protect us, so that we don't think these lethal weapons are just toys to be played about with, because they are killers, and they've been killing people. People, whether they are sane or insane, they've been using these weapons to get rid of innocent lives, and we don't need to encourage that in our country. All right. I mean, from UND shares in that, that it should be taken out of the police service. All right. Coming to Mr. Moore. What should we do going forward? I think the As way forward, the way forward is that we must continue to make sure that Ghanaians understand that security mm -hmm. is not the work of the police. It's the work of all of us. So if citizens are going to support the police, yeah. we can contain the situation very easily. People have information, they should give it to the police. Okay. We should support the police with information. Their numbers are enough, but mm -hmm. maybe not sufficient to reach every okay. corner of the country. So we should all help. Okay, so thanks very much to you, Mr. Bafoduchi Amwa, Chair International Action Network on Small Arm and member of the Small Arms Commission. Thanks to you also, Madam Cecilia Otu, concerned citizens and a retired nurse. And um, also thanks very much to you, Mr. Ibad, um, Ibrahim, security expert. Mm -hmm. And we'll be discussing the illegal arms trade in the country. Thanks for your comments and contributions to the program. We appreciate them all. Now we'll take a feature on the Bronze Zoo and return. <laughs>